the demonstration that I wanted to do with you tonight is regarding, um, because we're coming into the holidays, sharing with you how to get evergreen trees to look um, like evergreen trees. Um, so I'm going to share that with you tonight. Just some real quick um, ways to look, look at evergreens. And this kind of ties into my um, packet that I have available, which is the holiday trees, the holiday evergreens. Okay. I'm putting out a couple of colors. I've got um, sap green, of course, and um, I'm going to use, instead of citrus green, I'm going to use something that's a little less um, bright for this time of year, and that is fresh foliage. Okay. And if you don't have that, you can do citrus with some white. And then I'm putting out some peridot metallic, really pretty metallic, and some white. Okay. So some wicker white here. All right. Now these trees, like I said, um, are coming directly off of what I did in that packet, but in the, my um, holiday evergreen packet. But also one of the trees that I'm going to show you was how I did or what I did in my Santa Joy background. Okay. All right. So I have here these colors and I'm going to get the first one I'm going to show you is going to be the one that I did in Santa Joy. Okay. So I'm just picking up all sap green on my 16 flap. Okay. And I'm going to create my peak right here at the top. Just do a little quick line down and then I'm going to sweep down left and right like that. Just real quick sweep down. All right. And I'm going to come up through the middle and off to the side. All right, and so you can make this as tall or short as you like. I'm just going to go right to about there for the purpose of the demonstration. And just like that, it looks kind of cute, right? It could just be this and that's it because you've got different values of that green showing through with, um, with the sap green on my paper. But now, oops, <laughs> and stuck my hand right in the floating medium. Now I'm going to come in here and pick up just a touch of white on the chisel edge of my brush, just right there. All right. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to touch right in here. Let me come down just a little more so you can see a little better. There we go. So I'm at an angle right here and I'm going to sweep it up very lightly. See that little bit of white with that wet green is going to blend quickly. All right. And it just gives the faint look sweeping up and I'm getting just touches of white on the chisel edge of my brush. And so you're going to overlap going up the middle of the tree and very quickly you get a pretty little evergreen. And you can come in here if you want to create a little more with the green, um, some division back in there, or you can leave it just the way it is. Okay. So it's just little sweeps of white on the chisel edge. And then you can even pull down a little bit from the peak if you want to. Okay. So just like that. And there you go. So that's pretty easy, huh? Okay. Now the next one I want to show you is done more with the rake brush. Okay. So I'm going from like simple to a little more complex. All right. So with the rake brush, you want it damp with some water. All right. And I'm going to pick up sap green. And so it's wet a little bit, right? And then I'm going to flip it over and grab some of the fresh foliage. Okay. And so with this, just like with that one, I'm going to start here, but I'm going to come from the bottom and work my way up. All right. Because I've got those colors and they're wet on my brush. So I want to layer. Okay. So see how very quickly I can streak with that color side to side and then up the middle. 
Okay. And then I'm going to grab a little more of the light green and I can come right down. So every time I do this though, I've got to come to the bottom first. I'm grabbing some white. See that? And you're just lightly touching the bristles of the chisel edge down and then layering as you go up. Okay. I can come back and grab some dark. All right. The key to getting it to look round is you have to come down the middle. You can't keep splitting it apart like a hair part, right? You've got to come straight down the middle like that. Okay. So that's another quick and easy way to get an evergreen. Another um, that's more of a close up of an evergreen bow would be to come here and sweep it up. Oops. Up like this. Right. Then you can add some white onto the brush and pull up little bits of snow on that branch. See that? So if that was a larger part of a tree, you could add more detail with that little bit of snow like I would do here. Okay. All right. Now the last thing I'm going to show you real quick is with the fan brush. So the fan and the rake are very similar. Obviously the fan is shaped like a fan. Okay. And I'm going to grab this. I'm going to use heavy sap green. All right. So I'm loading one side of the flat of my brush with sap. Okay. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to load the other side with the light green, the fresh foliage. Okay. And so this is probably the more complex way to do this. All right. But first thing I want to do is create a center trunk. So I know what I'm following down. All right. So I just pulled my chisel straight down like that. All right. So now what I want to do is tap at the top and I'm going to turn it over because I want dark green up there. Okay. And I'm just going to go side to side as I come down. Now when I tap, I'm actually taking the corner of the brush. Let me show you over here. It's going to touch down right there. It's going to touch down and then you're pushing on that corner, which is causing it to flip up. Okay. And it creates a little triangle like that. If I did it to where it pushed the corner down, it would create a different look like this. Okay. So it doesn't really matter if you flip it up or down, but be consistent. Okay. So let me pick up more dark and I'm going to come right in here. And let's back up again. All right. So I'm just tapping as I go across kind of in a zigzag, but filling it in a little more than zigzagging, right? I don't want to see a Z shape going down here. All right. So then I can come back in here with some more dark if it got too light, but now you can kind of start seeing those triangles as I come through. See that triangle triangle. Okay. The mistake I think that it's not a mistake, it's just a different look. Um, but that some people tend to do is they take the brush and they keep it flat like this and they go this way, which to me looks like eyelashes um, and it's curved because of the nature of the brush. If you tip it to the corner, then you get more control to go straight and it looks more like foliage. Okay. See the difference? So, that's just my thoughts on that. It's not wrong to do it with that on the chisel. Now see how I've got this tree shape now. I can then come in with some white on the corner of my brush and I can come back and on one side, I can tap white to create a highlighted side or snow 
the white on one side is really going to be more like a highlighted side, like this side would be in shadow, and the right side would be in light, right? But see, see how that now creates a look of dark and light? Okay. And you can do the same sort of thing um, with these as well, right? You would just put the, the light color like I did here on one side, light color on one side. Okay, but if you like the corner better, it takes some practice, guys, so just don't give up on it, but it does take a little practice to get that, the right amount you're tapping, and the brush needs to be um, perpendicular, or actually horizontal, excuse me, to your surface this way, and it's not straight like this, right? It's tipped, almost like it's um, laying on its side, and then you're tapping that corner right and it's not a hard tap it's not like we're pouncing it's just enough to push that corner up so i'm not taking it and pushing it really hard like that and you want to gauge how much paint you want to use too right you saw how much paint i picked up i got quite a bit on here it's not heavy like gloppy leaving blobs but it's enough to move almost all the way through that whole tree okay all right, so that's tonight's demo, Evergreens, quick and easy, different methods, different brushes. You decide which ones you like best. And like I said, I've got packets and video lessons that talk to um, all of these different techniques, not only this way, but also with some lighter colors like whites and grays. Okay, oh, I, what did I do with the, the ever, with, I put the peridot out and then I didn't use it. So what I wanted to do with the peridot it doesn't really show up well on a tree like this because of all that smashing and color. But what you could have done in, ad in addition to this is come back in here with the green, the metallic peridot, which is a beautiful color. It's one of my favorites. And where we did the white here, let's come back down real quick. Where we did the white here, you can now come in and pull up the peridot over that white. And then you're going to get that pretty glow from that green, that metallic green. So it doesn't show real well in that angle, but if I can tip it, see that? There we go. See how pretty that is? And with the white or lighter green underneath, it makes it really pop out, okay? So don't forget your metallics and your glitters in the holidays when you're painting, guys, because that's really what makes it fun to get those out and have a good time with it. I know my husband and my boys just love when I get the glitter going. <laughs> they go running and screaming out of the room. <laughs> so that's too bad. That's what Christmas is all, well, not Christmas is all about, but that's part of the fun of the holidays is sparkling and spangling, I think. And thank you again for watching tonight. Have a wonderful evening. Take care. Bye-bye.